as a Ghanaian coming to South Africa, I sometimes walk through some neighborhoods and some public places, and then I see people smoking. And sometimes you might think it's cigarette, but you smell the scent, and then you are like, hey, hmm. And now your judgmental senses begin to arise. And then now a voice will come from nowhere and say, Hey, Wendy, you are not in Ghana. This is Mzanzi. It's a free state, man. You better watch Greet and Pass, if you don't mind. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. My name is Brad Jones, and it's your only bra from Ghana, living here in South Africa. If this is the first time you are coming across my channel, please consider hitting the red button. Consider subscribing. You know, this is a travel channel with me, your bra, exploring the beauty, the culture, the positivity, the beautiful nature of our beautiful continent, South Africa, and beyond to the world. You know, this month, March, actually marks exactly a year I moved from Ghana to South Africa. And yes, I have encountered a lot and experienced a lot more to talk about. You know, the good, the bad, the ugly. Yeah. And so today, I am here to talk about some cultural differences between Ghana and then South Africa based on my own experience here in this country. So let's go. So the first cultural shock or cultural difference that I'm going to dive into is tribalism, which goes hand in hand with patriotism. So, South Africans are more like, I am Zulu, I am Koza, I am Pedi, and etc, etc. And are more passionate and proud about repping their tribes and culture, wherever and whenever that they find themselves. One occasion that I saw this and I was like, oh my god, what is happening here? Was at a friend's graduation. And some of them came dressed in traditional and their tribe costumes. Can you imagine? So, I asked... And they said it was a Zulu traditional dress. It was beautiful, though. But in the beginning, it looked a little bit weird to me as a Ghanaian. Because way back in my country, my generation, we don't really patronize our culture dresses in public places like that. I mean, who will even think of wearing a traditional costume or a traditional dress on a graduation day? <laughs> so seeing this in South Africa really inspired me a lot. And I was like, wow, how I wish my own people, my Ghanaians, would see this and begin to proudly embrace our tribe and culture with passion like this one. So it's a thumbs up for South Africa. Yeah. So the second thing that I'm going to talk about is homosexuality. See, this is one topic that we Africans don't really like to talk about it. But trust me, things are actually happening in our communities. In South Africa, it is not illegal by law for people to enter into gay, lesbianism, transgender, in all LGBTQ relationships. I mean no offense. But way back in my country, Ghana, it is not like that. It is actually illegal for people to enter into gay lesbianism in all LGBTQ relationships by law. And when found guilty, you can be sentenced to not less than three years imprisonment. So as a Ghanaian coming to South Africa and then going to the malls and some public places and then seeing some LGBTQ activities and relationships free on the street like that, I was like, wait. What am I seeing with my eyes? I see, it's not like there isn't any LGBTQ activities or relationships in Ghana. I mean, there are people who are doing it. People are doing it in Ghana also. But there, because it is not legalized and it's punishable by law, you know, people do it in closed doors, in their secrets, and with a lot of caution. Yeah. And so, we only hear with our ears. But we don't see with our eyes, yeah. Because people are so cautious about it. Yeah, they do it in their closed doors. And so it's hardly for you to see one freely like that. 
So the next thing that I'm going to talk about is smoking of cigarettes, which is very big here in South Africa. You know, I was reading this article the other time online, and I got to find out that each day, 55,000 children from 10 to 14 years smoke cigarettes here in South Africa. And I was like, wow. It doesn't happen like that in Ghana. Though there are people who also smoke in Ghana, but not this quantity and not children. Yeah. Unless maybe in the urban places and even there you are seen as a bad person. You are seen like you don't have manners. Unless maybe in the urban places and even there you are seen to be that you lack manners, you are you are you are a, 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 a bad and troublesome person in society. And so for me, smoking cigarettes is the same as drinking beer. It's a no-no for me, especially when it comes to children. Because when I got here, you'll be in a restaurant having dinner, breakfast, or lunch, and then you'll see a person going out to have a smoking break. And I was like, how? <laughs> It's never like that in Ghana, yeah. And so for me, it's a culture shock. Okay, so the next thing is marijuana, and it has got to do with smoking as well. So in South Africa, it is legal by law for people to smoke marijuana whenever they feel in any quantity. Yeah, though in Ghana, it is illegal and it's punishable. When found guilty of smoking or taking marijuana, you can be sentenced to prison. So, I wouldn't say there are no marijuana smokers or takers in Ghana. There are. Yeah, of course, there are. But because it's punishable when caught, people do it with a lot of caution. Yeah. And so, in Ghana, it's hardly for you to even smell the scent of marijuana in neighborhoods and in public places. Yeah. Because when you are caught, you can be sentenced to prison. Yeah. So, to find people smoking in Ghana... Unless maybe in bushes, they hid in bushes far away from the town or uh, at remote areas, remote places called ghetto. Yeah, also far away from the town. That's where they hide and then smoke. And even there, sometimes the police pursue and then arrest them. <laughs> yeah, that's Ghana for you. As a Ghanaian coming to South Africa, I sometimes walk through some neighborhoods and some public places. And then I see people smoking. And sometimes you might think it's cigarette. But you smell the scent. And then you're like. Hey. Hmm. And now your judgmental senses begin to arise. And then now a voice will come from nowhere. And say, hey, Wendy. You are not in Ghana. This is Mzanzi. It's a free state, man. You better watch Greet and Pass. If you don't mind. <laughs> Yeah, and so that's it. So I find this to be a culture shock for me as a Ghanaian in South Africa. The next thing I'm going to dive into is religion. Yeah, so in Ghana, Christianity is the most dominating religion there, followed by Muslims and then the others. Yeah, and so public holidays is given to the Christians. Um, as in the Easter, Christmas, and the rest, you know. And as well as Muslims, like the Eid al Adha, Eid al Fitr, Ramadan, where Muslims go through long period of fasting, and then now, on the day they break their fast, it is given to them as a public holiday. You know. So in South Africa here, Christianity is the most dominating as well, followed by Muslims and then Hindus, Jewish, and other faiths. Yeah, sometimes you walk and then you will see Indians. And their type of dressing, their costume, you might think they are Muslims, but actually, no, they are Hindus. Yeah, they are all here. Yeah, so there are a lot of religion uh, and, and faith believers, different types of faith believers here in South Africa. But apart from Christians celebrating Easter and Christmas, no holiday is given to the other religions. No holiday is given to the Muslims. No holiday is given to the Hindus. No holiday is given to the Jewish. It's only Christians. And I was like, oh, why? I'm a Christian. 100% Christian. 
I believe in Jesus Christ and I believe in God. And so for me, I respect each and everyone's faith and each and everyone's religion. Yeah. And so for me, I was expecting some equality here. Yeah, but hey, this is SA, this is South Africa. Yeah. And so I find this to be a culture shock for me. Yeah. Okay, so the next thing that I'm talking about is lifestyle. Yeah, lifestyle. Guys, I must tell you this. South Africa is very expensive. Yeah, compared to my country, Ghana. Yeah. So when I came here, I had this app, currency app on my phone. And then so anytime I go to the shops, the mall, at the mall, uh, the stores to buy something, I will compare the price to that of Ghana to see if it's too expensive or too much before I buy or not. So the Ghana city is a bit higher than the rand. I think one Ghana city is 1.66 rand here in Ghana. So for instance, you go to a shop, try to purchase a shirt, and then you realize that the price of the shirt is like double if you had bought that same shirt in Ghana. And so I sometimes end up not buying, so, you know. So a friend advised me one day and then he said, look, you have to live for the moment, you know. You have to live by the estate currency. Other than that, you might not buy anything here in this country. And then you might end up even living South Africa. So don't compare the SA currency to your country's currency. You should compare the value instead. Yeah, if maybe a shirt cost, uh, let's say, 400 rands. You should just compare the value. That is it worth buying? Yeah. So I find that to be a culture shock also. Okay, so the last and final thing I'm going to talk about is that in South Africa, Android is more popular compared to iPhone or iOS. Yeah. Companies like Samsung, Huawei, and etc. are making it big here in South Africa compared to Ghana. There are many other Android companies that I didn't know existed until I moved to South Africa. Because in Ghana, iPhones are more popular compared to South Africa. I think it's because Ghana has this trade with china with imports and exports yeah so it makes it easier as compared to south africa here in sa iphones are very expensive when i moved here it's like you very few people use iphone and when i found i got to find out it's like iphones are very expensive here in south africa i have friends and family back home who be like hey jones i want you to buy iphone for me from south africa see i am telling you now iPhones here are very, very, very expensive compared to Ghana. Yeah. And so it's not easy to buy an iPhone here compared to Samsung or Huawei. Yeah. And sometimes the reason why people want to buy iPhone is because of the quality of the camera. Yeah. To take pictures and other stuff. But I think here in SA, the weather is very fine. And so with any minor Android phone with camera lighting, you can get your pictures and videos sorted out. Trust me, Slave Queen desperation here in South Africa is not on iPhone. No, it's rather wigs, high heels, makeups, <laughs> etc. Trust me, it's not on iPhone. Yeah, so you you see a Slave Queen, gorgeous, beautiful, elegant, but doesn't have an iPhone. She's using an Android. And so that is one thing. So for me, I don't really mind if people are using iPhone or not. Me, I am using an Android. Yeah, for me, I'm using an Android. And I bought it from Ghana. Yeah, and that is what I'm even using for this video. So you can tell. Yeah, and so, though, if I get an iPhone, it's fine. It's because of some functions. It will help me in my vlogs and business, you know, other stuff. And so, yeah, that is also a culture shock for me. Okay, so this is where we draw the curtains and I will say thank you very much for always supporting and patronizing my channel. Kindly subscribe if you haven't. Please, kindly subscribe. Let's move this channel to 2K. Trust me, there are a lot of vlogs, a lot of videos. We are showing more natural beauty stuff and historic places here in South Africa. 
not only in Mpumalanga, in South Africa. We are going to move to all the provinces and hopefully we are going to move outside South Africa and show the world to Africa. Thank you very much for supporting my channel. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.